When a single comic franchise just isn't enough to fill a mediocre video game, you gotta multiply your mutants, and fortunately for all of us, that's exactly what happens in Spider-Man and X-Men Arcade's Revenge. Released for the Genesis in 1994, this Sega version of Arcade's Revenge came two years after the Super NES original. Now, to be honest, I've never played the Super Nintendo version, but if it's anything like this, I don't think I want to. Like other X-Men titles of the era, Arcade's Revenge is kind of a mutation of its own, mixing some rudimentary platforming with lots of beat-em-up action. The thing is, the game doesn't do either of them very well. Although it's certainly better than some of the other X-Men games, that's basically saying it's better than bad. In fact, I, I don't remember much about my time with Arcade's Revenge. Either Professor X wiped my mind, or the game is just that forgettable. It's a good thing Kevin was here to remind me what Arcade's Revenge is all about. I guess Spider-Man is, you know, doing his thing, disarming bombs in a condemned building, and he finds out that the X-Men have been kidnapped by an evil villain named Arcade. Now, I don't know how Spidey feels, but this was a serious disappointment for me. I thought Arcade's Revenge meant this was some revenge-laden sequel to an arcade game. I guess I don't read enough comics. Anyway, so you play the game in segments as Spider-Man and a bunch of different X-Men, and each of the characters has a unique level or two to play through, and most of them end with boss battles. Juggernaut, uh, Apocalypse, and Carnage are among them, but it all comes down to an epic final confrontation between Spider-Man and Arcade. Now, the reason I'm name-dropping characters I'm only vaguely familiar with is the characters seem to be the sole appeal of Arcade's Revenge, playing as comic heroes and battling classic villains. In fact, the game seems to think you'll be so excited about who is in the game, you won't notice that what is in the game just isn't that good. Sure, maybe the platforming's rough around the edges and the controls are kinda stiff, but I mean, it's Spider-Man and X-Men, who cares? This is, this is amazing. Speaking of amazing, we have to thank Evrardo from Texas. He sent us this copy of Arcade's Revenge. Uh, and that's just awesome. Thanks a lot for the donation, Evrardo. Uh, it's almost as awesome as your name, Ev Evrardo. I love that. Now again, this isn't a terrible game, in fact, Arcade's Revenge does a couple things well, uh, most of which have to do with Spider-Man. To me, the best parts of this game are easily the Spidey levels. His controls are a lot better than those of his X-Men counterparts, and the game actually does a nice job with the whole web-slinging mechanic. But even his half of Spider-Man and X-Men Arcade's Revenge isn't anything special. And almost 20 years after its release, the only thing people remember about this game is its soundtrack. 